past is filled with incredible mysteries. The clues to solving them are all around, hidden in plain sight. Concealed in those pages is the key to something much, much bigger. A conspiracy that crosses the globe. And a discovery that the world isn't ready to believe. Mesopotamia, Sumer, and Babylon. Amongst these vast writings is a story which mirrors the book of Genesis in the Bible. It tells a story of a great flood which reshaped the face of the planet Earth and all of her inhabitants. It tells a story of a tower built and the creation of the spoken word. One of these scrolls includes a star map of what appears to be a sun and its planets. The writings include detailed descriptions and maps of our solar system matching what we know today and beyond. It includes a tenth planet in an orbit between Mars and Jupiter. It is written that the tenth planet Nibiru was thrust into our solar system and collided with the planet Tiamat. The remaining bulk of Tiamat over time became Eridu, the Earth as we know it. And the rest of her became the asteroid belt. In retrograde to the other nine planets, Nibiru took orbit around our sun in a long ecliptic or apogee. Lasting 3,600 years, it passes between Mars and Jupiter. This story of reptilian gods from the heavens creating man is not at all uncommon. It in fact can be found in most every region of our planet. three generations, the Bushes have been members of Skull and Bones. And for three generations, they've traveled to Northern California and the Bohemian Grove. There are many prominent foreigners, like German Chancellor Helmut Schmidt, Ronald Reagan, Richard Nixon are pictured here in 1957 at the Bohemian Grove. Both men wrote about the organization in their public memoirs. Schwarzenegger is a reported visitor to the Bohemian Grove, as well as former President Jimmy Carter. Nowhere is the origin of the cult more in evidence than in former German Chancellor Helmut Schmidt's own autobiography, Men in Power, Trilateral Commission, the CFR, Bilderberg Group, and World Government. And he says that much of the decisions are made at the Bohemian Grove. <laughs> Chance of death equals death and devil equals death, accompanied by mock human sacrifices. President Taft was a prominent member of Skull and Bones, and in 1900, he became the first president to visit Bohemian Grove in Northern California, a satellite of Skull and Bones. From 1945 and the end of the war through 1989 and the end of the Cold War, we had a worldview, Republican and Democratic presidents alike, from Harry Truman to George Bush, stood for freedom. 
and stood for certain propositions that would make America strong and healthy and grow the middle class and shrink poverty and stand against communism. And after 1989, President Bush kept said, and it's a phrase that I often use myself, that we needed a new world order, and instead it looks like we got a lot of disorder. And we still, when, and after 9-11, we've been more sensitive to the We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order, a world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. This is an effort to uncover the worst and most incredible criminal organization and, and conspiracy in human history. And they have put this conspiracy together over hundreds of years, centuries have taken them to get this kind of control. They designed these kinds of, of, of warfares that, that we, we experienced in the last century as a means to this control. And they are willing to do anything to meet their goals. The whole group that's running the world, and make no mistake, ladies and gentlemen, they are a very dangerous group of people. They are evil beyond anything you can wrap your brain around. I've told you this before, they have murdered millions, hundreds of millions. Don't let them succeed, please. This is really the fight for the future of humanity, and that's how important it is. How did they build the Rothschilds into such a powerful force financially and politically? Were they able to buy the Bank of England, buy the European Central Bank and the Federal Reserve? And how they've, uh, they've positioned themselves to control world money supplies to the detriment of every single breathing, living creature on the planet, except themselves. They have a messiah picked out, and they're waiting to announce it. This stuff is real. The money they've spent is in the trillions. The, much of it has come from the public purse of the United States and Europe. They are working day and night to bring on uh, this mess that's coming, and it is the introduction of a new messiah. Their, their messiah is going to be a figurehead that is housed in the uh in jerusalem and they are going to try to set up their one world government through this in fact their documents stating these facts have gone back generations but how much do we need to stand for before we stand up and say that is enough a conspiracy that crosses the globe and a discovery that the world isn't ready to believe. This universe that we live in is a creation. We're living in and expressions of the total field of creativity. Universal the creativity. Conspiracy in Area 51. Kennedy assassination, Roswell. As expressions or little nodes of that colossal cosmic creativity, there's almost a responsibility of pressing or expressing whatever it is that we stand for.